Okay, my outstanding friends, this is going to be interesting because this relates to Mount Spur and all of the geological activity that's going on on the earth right now, which is not good. And I am going to explain this to you about Mount Spur because I've been following very carefully. My last name is Spur. I was in Anchorage. I understand this thing quite well. And I am contacting the USGS and Matt Haney, who is the director up there. And I, I just want to document this so that nothing gets lost. You know, I make these statements. Oh, well, I don't remember this. I don't remember. That. I don't know. I don't. I don't know Matt Haney. I don't know what his response will be. However, we will find out. And I will be doing more and more videos on this, basically every day until Spur pops, which it could be any day now. So uh, I'm going to explain to you what is in this email. And what I expect as a response, and what we deserve as a response as citizens that are paying these taxes to do this work, to look into these things. Now, again, I don't know Matt Haney. I have no idea what he's like or what he thinks. But what I have found is it's very difficult for somebody to open their mind enough to pay attention to what I am going to present. The only ones that paid attention were the Russians. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. 2014, they contacted me about their sinkholes. And I explained to them, I said, nothing you can do. I said, your tundra is going to drop, man. Is it just, you know, it's going to, well, it's actually exploded at that point. But once the release goes and you don't have that extreme pressure under there, then they sink. So the first one popped. And then, oh, a couple weeks later, 13 sinkholes popped right in that area or dropped. The first one was so explosive that it went off like a bomb. Although it, it didn't light up, it was just pressure. Once the tundra thaws out, everything under there starts to decompose and that creates these gases. I mean a ton of them. And they, everywhere there was a frozen environment during this great hot water flood. And MI, uh, not MIT, Harvard just did a, uh, back in October. Well, let me explain to you as we go through this. I'm going to read to you the email that I am sending, and we'll see what response we get. Okay, let me just read you the email I'm sending to USGS, Matt Haney specifically, because he's the director in charge up there in Alaska. And I said, uh, this is about Mount Spur. Hello, sir. I'm an independent researcher studying the geology of Earth. I discovered and named mud fossils, which are perfectly preserved soft tissue fossils. And the ones I have are vetted with DNA and CAT scans. And I understand the nucleophilic invasion and the substitution process and all the silicates and so forth that preserve them in a silica-rich hot water flood condition worldwide. Now, Harvard published a paper in 20, October 2024 that they said a giant asteroid at least four times bigger than Mount Everest hit Earth, which boiled the oceans, a great, great flood and a catastrophe, just like the biblical flood. And it happened long ago and was the great dying event. It, but here's what happened. It preserved the flesh in these temperate areas because they boiled just like you boil them in a soup and then when a nucleophilic invasion started in this silica rich all the silicates started to invade with the transition metals and change them into just solid things like my buddy here caesar the goose there's just feathers and everything this is not silly. This is absolutely certain. And mine are DNA tested and so forth. There's bones preserved. They say, well, that's just a rock. No, no, no. That's the head of a bone. And there is no anatomist in the world that can deny that. And no, nobody can deny the things that I'm showing. This is a piece of meat. It preserved because of the conditions that it was found itself in. And that all determines, was it in acid? Was it in salts? How long was it, did it, the water run off of it? Did it dry out quickly? Did it dry out slowly? I have all of this stuff fully, fully understood now, basically. Now, let's get back to this. It happened long ago, and the, it was a great time. It preserved the flesh, as I just showed you, in the regions around the equator area, basically. In the poles, it was extremely cold, just like it is now when it's getting warm very fast. They froze. The flesh froze. And now it's thawing out. 
It's fun. That's why we got these enormous gases. Anyway, I just want to give them a little information about my background here. I said I was contacted and, and discussed this same sort of situation with the Russians in 2014 about their exploding sinkholes. They contacted me. I didn't contact them. In 2014, a mysterious crater, this is in quotations, it's from on the net. In 2014, a mysterious crater appeared in the Yamal Peninsula, northwest Siberia. Scientists believe the crater was caused by an explosive release of methane gas. <laughs> Absolutely. Methane expansion explosions as the tundra thawed and pressure blew the top off of that sinkhole. This is a different story than spur. These are a ton of separate hole sinkholes because it's just, just like this. Because that, my friends, up in there is a lung. They have all of these and one of them, the bigger one, popped and then a bunch of little ones around it sunk right in after that. all of the big release came out. Because think of this. Think if this was covered with a mat of just a, like a ice, which is what it was. It was tundra, it was frozen. And then it got weak. The bigger thing would cave in and it was huge and, phew, and it popped out. It didn't fall down. And then a couple of weeks later, 13 baby craters showed up. And again, I, was, I, I talked to the Russians. I actually talked to the guys. Nice guy. He was good English. No problem talking to him. But anyway, that, that was what happened up in um, 2014. Now, the creatures that were on Earth are so extremely large, and I'm showing them, and there's nobody can deny this. It just only can be dismissed because it's too much for the average mind to handle. That's why I'm documenting this. I want to make sure that this is taken care of in the correct scientific manner. Now, the creatures once here were extremely enormous and were frozen in the polar regions after this great global flood. Everywhere. They are decomposing now rapidly because it's warming up like crazy. As you know, methanes are spewing out of the Arctic because biology is thawing out. Just like a freezer door left open, they will rot and decompose just like food would. Today's headline, shocking global glacier ice loss accelerated by 36% in the last decade. It's thawing out. You just left the door open. My claim is spur is biology thawing fast and now must release the pressure. And it, it's, it, it doesn't seem to, that the, the plug is allowing it to slowly release like Yellowstone. It's, it's, and that's why you're getting so many of these, oh, I got to get out of here, I got to and then it's going to go. Now, I said, please comment on this short video that makes my claims. I also can explain the green moss balls in Alaska, which are feeding on biology that is unthawing. These little balls are all everywhere. And there are, those were biology as well. And they are unthawing and they're edible and the moss is eating them. I'll be doing a video today about this whole thing we're talking about, and I will send you another link to that. I know this is not mainstream, but it is reality. Thank you. And then I attach the, the moss balls, and the rest is well, quite obvious. And I have the, the uh, video from yesterday. I have already sent them to the Alaska Obser Observatory up there. So let's see what happens. I'm going to send it right now. Boom. Here it is, a shocking global glacier ice loss. There's so much is going on, nobody's paying attention to. I get all these alerts come all the time. They're going to euthanize all these dolphins. Talking about a silly killer asteroid. Mummies, they're, they're starting to look into things. This is mushrooms. They're finding a lot of these bacterias and things that are, and uh, funguses actually do a lot of good stuff in your body. You know, they can hurt you, but they can fi fix you. Here's another one, mysterious, uh, misreading a major law of physics for almost 300 years. I gotta look into that. Miss hundreds of black holes. Listen to this. A black hole is, is just simple. <laughs> They're everywhere in space. I shouldn't get into that. That's a whole other issue. You know, I got to show you this because this is another problem in, in science. This is a black hole. 
This is again the Russians. I, I didn't really work with them, but I, they were very forthcoming about this. And it shows all of the interactions of these particles in a vacuum tube, in a vacuum chamber, in space. And these are charged particles and they form a black hole. That's exactly what would happen because space, you can separate the black from the white, but not here on Earth. On here, it crushes it. And they explained this. They were pretty good, but they just didn't understand this. Look at this. During the experiment, we contacted the Earth guys who couldn't believe it either. They thought it was going to set up stripes like this and that, like boxes. Everybody was separated just because of their push to each other, which that's what I would have expected too. But dipole electron flood theory does predict predict exactly this, which is black holes. This is dipole electron flood theory, which says that all of the black particles are the mass, and they, are, they go to the center, and the white ones crust around them to try to get to them. The tightest held are very close, and the, the, those are the blue, then you get to the green, then you get to the red, which is further away. The further they get from the center, which is the core, the black, the less solidly held they are. That's why they can bond and do all those and you can get light shooting off of here by blowing off some of these little particles. Now this is the anatomy of the proton. Is it, that's all it is. Very, very, very simple. And there's 1800 and I had 1823. It's, I think it's 1839 I've settled in on of these dipoles that make up one proton. 1840 is a neutron, it's neutral. The proton wants one more to make it complete or wants to give one up to somebody else to share and then it becomes complete. So that's what that's all about. Dipole electron flood theory solves everything. That's why the black go to the center uh, in space. But on here on Earth, that wouldn't happen. It can't, it can't happen here on Earth because of the gravity. And even in space, you can see that the, well, let me show you show you this real quick. These, only, these are the only two particles make up everything there is, and I call it atomic vapor. Now, normally these two are attached together tight as can be. That's the strong nuclear force, and that makes a dipole electron. All right, now, here on Earth, in its atom smashers, they can do this, and this is right from Fermilab. This is their picture. The black with a glowy edge around it, which is all mass fixed, cannot get bigger or smaller, and it's solid mass. That is just a glowy vapor field, and it gets bigger and stronger as it bounces into other vapor fields, and they really have no weight to speak of. And this is what a photon looks like. It's two dipole electrons back to back, which creates a big field around it, like a balloon. And when that balloon hits something, it bounces back. That's what you see as light, it's just bouncing back. We saw this as light through a Venturi. Rod Warren just accidentally created a Venturi and we could see the light accelerate. When I saw what he did, he didn't realize what he did, he just was experimenting, trying to make a double slit experiment uh, thing, but he forced it to come together into a funnel instead of going through a flat plate. They always thought it did this and that, it does not do that. It's, this is just the particle right here and when it hits that venture, it explodes. So we could separate the black from the white. That's the beauty of this whole thing, because that's what that's what electricity is. Only the white, and we can do that here. And we should be able to put a harvester right there to harvest that white. And we didn't have to do anything to get the white separated from the black. Just a venture. Now here's what happens in space. Out there, they got the black and the white. They got the charged, and then they got the the black particles. And the charged ones group around the black ones to try to get to it, and they force it into a black hole. Now, you see how this is flat? It's not flat, flat, but it's, it's squished. Why is it squished? Because the gravity of the Earth, even to the space station out there, the cosmonauts, it flattened it out a little bit, but not like on Earth. On Earth, it would be like this. You'd see nothing. You'd just see white mixed with black. You wouldn't see any hole like that. But in space, they see them all the time. They're everywhere. But we are made out of this stuff. We're made out of black and white. The white is energy. That has no mass. If we were made out of the white stuff, I'd go like this and nothing would happen. That's the black stuff. 
is 100% certainty we can separate these particles. And the only way they can separate them is hitting huge things and making a big mess. We use light, which is the smallest particles. That's what they're starting to do now at CERN and Fermilab. They're trying to get down into the light range, which we started with. But they still want to get a lot of money, so they keep these gigantic machines. This is, we separated the black from the white. The white is being pushed by the black. The black has the mass. The white has no mass. But they will attach together and they will push the white in front of it. These are called whistler waves. They're just nothing but the white part. And the black part is coming through and pushing it. It's very, very up here and then it's just soft out here. These, these are actually in the sound range. I know I'm getting carried away with this, but it, you know it's hard to make a statement and then just say that's what it is. No, you got to make a statement and then stand behind it and say here's what happened. So it is the anatomy of the proton. It's going to be some significant change. Well, everything changes in <laughs> science 100%. This is what happened with the Russians again. This goes back to 2014, 2015, right in that area. Same time I was talking to him about the black holes. I mean about the sinkholes. In cryogenic space, where it's cold as cold can be, those particles start to wrap into a double helix. It looks like they freaked out about this too. Well, who wouldn't? That looks like DNA, and they, space smells like steak because it is just nothing but roasting things in space. All right, this is my claim, and they say they say it: 8.8 percent ice lost right up in this area. 22 percent lost over in this area. This is not good. This is starting to belch methanes. And they know this. They, they've been talking about belching methanes for a while now. But this is as bad as it gets. And everything here is starting to melt. And then as the melt happens, the biology starts to, to, to rot, basically. And these little ice balls, these little green moss balls, are, are all over up in here because all of the biology has melted, or the ice has melted away, and the biology is on the surface. All right, I know I've jumped from this to that and the other thing, but everything is related. These are the green moss balls right up in Matt Haney's area up there, and they're everywhere. You see how many there is? They're, every single one of these balls, 100%, are covered with moss. And that's because it's thawing out from a creature's gigantic, enormous dead body. And these are now coming to the surface, and all of that moss wants a place to live, and it's eating off of those biological little meatballs. And that's what they were, they're little meatballs. Right in there is a meatball. And the roots are coming in from every different direction. They say they move and so forth. Yes, they follow the sun, and they move, with their, and they grow, and they move, and they turn. You can actually see the way they're twisting here. It's rolling in that direction. This stuff here wants to get some light. It's already got plenty. It goes back around, and it just keeps going and going. All right, so Matt Haney, please, my friend, let's have a reasonable discussion about this. I'm not out to cause any issues. I just want to see something realistic and hopefully to discuss it. That's all. All right, thank you. I love you all. We shall continue this until spur pops. <laughs> all right, I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Bye.